In this video I wanted to show my mobile HF antenna setup and I use the um, trailer receiver hitch to mount this. So I've got two hitches. One is the regular hitch that I've just attached the quick disconnect that came with the antenna and I made a plate that um, the base of the antenna sits on. You'll see it when I put the antenna on. And then I also made a heavy duty one for my load leveling hitch for my trailer. So I can actually run the antenna while I'm pulling a trailer. Um, this is bolted on in the place where there's normally a anti-sway bar. I don't need it on my trailer so I just made this uh, heavy aluminum bracket with um, a steel plate underneath. This is a few years old so it's been used quite a bit. But it's very sturdy and it works real well. And you'll see why I need something this heavy for this antenna. It's a big antenna. It weighs about 15 pounds. And if I move over to the truck, back of the truck here, um, this is the wiring for the antenna. It's motorized, so there's a uh, power lead. And then there's also the feed line. I did a couple other things that you'll see here in a moment. So let me go ahead and um, put the hitch in and show you the other features. Okay, I'm gonna show uh, the regular antenna, or the regular uh, hitch first. And normally the problem with something like this, is once you hook it up, this wiggles around, so your antenna is gonna wiggle around also, and this doesn't provide a good ground. So there's two things I've done. One is I've provided some ground leads on the antenna, and secondly is I tap some holes and put some bolts in here so I can actually secure this. I'll give you a close-up in a minute. But I can tighten up bolts on the side and on the bottom that secure this hitch. I don't need this when there's a trailer hooked on, but I'm just using the antenna by itself, then I need this. And I've got a lock nut on here so that it will stay in place. So now it's real secure, it doesn't move at all. And um, let me show you that in a close up here. Okay, here's a closer view. Here's this bolt. I've got a washer on here because I lay the wires next to here when uh, I'm not, I don't have the antenna plugged in. Here's the wire harness. I'll just stick it in here so it can dangle there. The other bolt is underneath right here. So I can tighten it so it doesn't go up and down. And this one is the tightening so it doesn't go side to side. And then another feature I put in here, under the bumper here, like right here, there's um, a ground plug. There's actually a couple of them. Here's another one over here, and I have another one on the other side of the bumper, depending on which, which hitch I'm using. So the next thing I'll show you is how the antenna put, is put on here. First thing I do before I even uh, put the antenna on is I put a little bit of grease on here so that it'll slide on and off real easy. And just a very thin coat is all it takes. Otherwise it could end up binding up on here at some point in time. Okay, that's good. Okay, here's the antenna. Okay, there's an Allen wrench that has one screw here that secures the antenna once it's on this bracket. So I gotta loosen that up to get it on.
Now you can see why this plate is on the bottom here because the whole antenna just sits down on there and sits flat. Otherwise this uh, hitch is a little bit narrow and it might wobble around. Okay, there's a close-up view. There's the lower plate that I made to fit on top of here. By the way, this uh, mount has a three-quarter inch bolt that goes through the bottom here, so it's very sturdy. These uh, lines here plug in to those plugs that I showed you earlier. So now besides being grounded through the frame and everything, it's grounded through here and I do have these bonding straps on different body parts and framework and so forth. And then of course there's a shunt coil here. So back off of this a little bit and you can see what the whole thing looks like except for the, the whip. Okay, let me get the whip out. I've got a quick disconnect on the whip as well. Okay, here's the whip that goes on the antenna. This whole thing goes up and down. This antenna is made by Scorpion antennas. It's a very well made, uh, excellent antenna. Thought I'd show you their logo just so you can see who it's made by. Next thing is I want to hook it up electrically so the control line for the antenna plugs in here and the feed line plugs in here. And that's all there is to hook it up. You'll notice that there's a toroid core down here. That's on the control line so you don't get RF down the control line. It affects it. It's also very quiet when the motor is tuning the antenna up and down. A lot of antennas generate a lot of noise. This one's very quiet electrically. Okay, I'm in the vehicle now where the radio's at and there's two other things. One is I have it just uh, the antenna motor wired in temporarily with a cigarette lighter plug, which I've got several outlets up here. So that now has powered it up. And I just have a standard um, control switch up and down rocker switch here that came with the antenna. And uh, I'll show you how it's tuned. So right now I'm on 40 meters and I'm on lower sideband. I'm going to switch the mode to RTTY and I'm going to check, see if I can zoom in here so you can see, I'm going to check the power output and I'm at 30% right now so I'm going to leave it at 30% that's what I use for tuning it up and the first thing I do is put it RTTY and turn up the volume a little bit and I'm um, high in frequency right now so I'm gonna go up with the antenna to lower frequency and listen if you can you'll hear the static noise peak at the point where it's resonant I'm going up now you can hear the noise increasing I just passed it I'm gonna go back down it's about there where it's resonant. So the next thing I'll do is I'll key up the mic and see where I'm at. Oh, it's almost right on right now. I'm going to change it a little bit. Maybe you can see that. I'm way out now. I'm almost dead on now. N6TWW. So now it's resonant and it's working at that frequency. Sorry for the shaky camera. And since I've come down in frequency, I would probably want to retune at this frequency if I was to talk to these people. 
but at least I'm close. I'm in the general range now where they're at. The other thing I wanted to show here was uh, the actual coil going up and down. So I'm going to step back into the cab and press the buttons and make it go up and down so you can see it move up and down. It, it goes pretty slowly, but it makes it really easy to tune. Next thing is I'm going to go ahead and swap over this big hitch because I'm going to run with the trailer here in a few days. So let's go ahead and just switch it over and show you how easy it is. Basically I've disconnected the antenna there. Again i got to find the Allen wrench. There it is. This antenna comes off. Now since I tightened up these bolts on this one, I'll have to loosen up the bolts. Again, that's, these are only needed if you're not pulling a trailer. So unlock this pin. Pull this hitch out, put the big one in. This time I'm not going to tighten these bolts down, I'm just going to tighten up the lock nuts because if I tighten the bolts down and the trailer tries to move the hitch, I'm liable to strip out the bolts, which I don't want to do. But tightening down the lock nuts will prevent the bolts from falling out. So again, it's hooked up. I need to put some grease on this again because I haven't run this in this mount yet without re-greasing it. I clean this off periodically and I just use um, some barbecue fluid with a rag and it cleans right off. Okay, there's that. Let's go ahead and pop the antenna back on here. the Allen screw here. Look back in my ground leads. Plug in the control line. And then the feed line. 
and it's all set ready to go again. Now if the weight of the trailer on here is going to be held steady, but if I just tried to run it like this, you can see that this will move around. I, I do run it like this sometimes, but I tighten down those bolts and it doesn't move at all. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching, 73.